In our last video, we looked at how to checkmate with two major pieces against a lone king. And in this video, we'll be looking at how to checkmate with one major piece and a king against a lone king. So here we have one major piece, the queen. And the queen itself is not enough to give checkmate to the opponent's king. However, we can use the queen to force the opponent's king into a corner, and then we can use our king to help checkmate. Let's see how this will work. So the first step here is to form a box. We play queen to e4 so that we form a box like this. Well, how is this a box? Well, let's see. So the queen controls the fourth rank, so that the king can't go cross it, and the queen also controls the e-file, which the king can also not cross. So really, the king is limited to anything left of the d-file and anything above the fifth rank. So taking away all these arrows, we have that the king really only has this much space to move around. Notice that the king can never attack the queen because the king can never get next to it. Therefore, the king is limited to just moving in his uh, own box here. So for example, he might play king to d6. If black plays king to d6, then what should white do to make the box smaller? Well, there's a general rule that white can follow. Pretty much, white should do what black does. So since black moved his king like this, white should follow suit with his queen. That means he should also move his queen diagonally, just like that. right? If black goes to the left, then white moves his queen to the left. Notice how slowly but surely we're reducing the size of the box. Now black's box is only this big. So let's see, what happens if black plays here? If you want a moment to think about it, you can pause your video. But the correct move here is white should play queen to f6. right? Black moves like this, white goes like this. Both sides copy each other. So after black moves, for example, king to c7, then white should follow suit as well. So if black moves his king to the left, white should move his queen to the left. And now the box got, got smaller by another two squares. If black wants to move his king to d8, then white should do the same as what black did. Black moves his king this way, white moves his king, queen also this way, like that. So eventually, though, we continue following black's king all the way until he gets to the corner. So once black's king is in the corner, we need to think about it. Black just moved over here to the left. Does this mean that white should also move like this? No, that means white shouldn't move here because if white does, this would be stalemate. That would be a draw. So instead of moving to c7, white should stop his queen right there. This only means that black can only go to these two squares, which is not really a problem. So black is confined to these two squares, and now it's time for white to involve his king. White should move his king up closer to black's king. So we should go king to c2, for example. Black is forced to go back and forth between these two squares, and white will move his king gradually towards black's king, like this. OK, and once black's king is uh, on a8 and white's king is on b6, white's king is close enough to black's king. And now if black moves king to b8, then white has a multiple checkmates to choose from. He can play queen to b7, or queen to d8, or even queen to e8. Any of these work, and white gets checkmate. This method works with the king and queen on any of the squares. For example, if the king's on f7 and the queen's on g3, this uh, kind of strategy with the box can still work. So first, white wants to make the smallest box possible. He has two choices right now. White can either play queen to g5, which makes a box like this, or he can go back and play the move queen to e5, which makes a box like this. Since this box is smaller than the other box, white should play queen to e5, making the checkmate faster. And now, white simply follows exactly what black does. If black, for example, moves to king to f8, white follows suit. White moves his queen up one square. If black moves to king g7, then white does the same. White moves his queen back to f5. And if black moves his king to h6, then white still continues to con copy black and plays queen to g4. Pretty much whatever black does with his king, white should do with his queen. Of course, this applies until black's king reaches the end. Once black's king gets to the corner, then it's time for white to move his king in. So white should move king to d4 now. Black has no choice but to play king h7 and king h8 repeatedly. So white can continue, continue bring, uh, bringing his king in. And then finally, at the end, we have checkmate. Checkmating with a rook is also possible, but it's a little bit different than checkmating with a lone queen. So in this position, black has a lone king and white has a king and a rook. However, this time, white needs to use his king and his rook together to force black's king into the corner. This time, since the rook cannot move diagonally, black's king could, for example, attack the rook if it was placed on g4. So white needs his king to defend the rook in order to bring black to the corner for checkmate. The first step is still the same. We need to make a box. So we play rook to d3. This makes a box between the king. And we're trying to drive the king eventually to this corner here. 
So now if black plays, for example, king to f4, we need to constantly ask ourselves the question, can we make the box smaller? So currently our box is like this. Can we move our rook somewhere to make the box smaller? Well, the answer is yes, you can. The rook can move to e3, and that makes the box smaller. Once again, if you place king to f5, we need to make, ask ourselves the question, can we make our box smaller? Well, let's see. Can we move our rook to e4? No, because the king will take it. So that doesn't work. Can we move our rook to f3? Well, no, that doesn't really work either because this king can go into this box. So maybe we cannot make the box smaller at this move. If we can't make the box smaller, that means you should keep your rook where it is and move our king. So where should we move our king? Well, opposition seems like a good idea, right? We move our king to f3 and we're threatening to move rook to e4 next move, making the box even smaller. Now, black might play something like king to g5. And now once again, white must ask himself this question, can we make the box smaller? The answer is yes. White can make the box smaller. He plays rook to e4, and once again, the box is now here, another three squares smaller than before. Now after this move, black might play the move king to f5. So after king to f5, we can probably see that the rook cannot make the box any smaller. The rook is currently making the box as small as possible, and the king's on the corner of the box. So we can't make the box smaller at this moment. That means that we need to move our king again. So where should we move our king? Well, there's only one choice. If we move our king anywhere else, then the rook would be uh, hanging. So the king moves to e3. It's a waiting move, waiting for black to make a decision. Now if black plays king to g5, same question. Can we make the box smaller? If you want to pause your video to think about it, you can. But the correct answer here is yes, we can make the box smaller. Rook to f4 does make the box smaller. So once again, if we look at the box now, the king is only confined to these eight squares now. Uh, after king to g6, ask yourself the same question, can the box be smaller? Answer is no, the box cannot be smaller. So once again, white needs to move his king somewhere. Where should you move his king? Well, let's just try f3. If you're not sure, just move your king around. King to f3. Okay, so if black moves king to g5, same question, can we make the box smaller? Answer is no, because the king is already on the corner of the box, we can't make that box any smaller. So, we just play king to g3, yet another move waiting for black to play king to g6. Of course, you might say, oh, well, why can't I play king to e3? Well, the correct answer is, well, that repeats moves. So, you don't want to repeat moves, you want to make some progress. King to g3 makes progress, because after king to g6, now white has a chance to play king to g4. After king to g4, we cut off these three squares from black's king, and actually, really, we actually make the box only six squares big now. No matter what black plays, if black plays, for example, king to h6, we can play the move rook to f5, and that makes the box even smaller. So now the box is only six uh, squares big. If the king goes back to g6, we can't make the box smaller. We play king to f4. And then now, if he plays the move king to g7, you need to ask yourself the same question. Even now, can we make the box smaller? So once again, you can't make the box smaller. There's no uh, way. Rook g5 doesn't work. Uh, no other rook moves work right now. But we do can we can play uh, king g5, and now the box is only four squares large. Of course, these two squares are controlled by white's king. So now after king to h7, we can play the move rook to f6, making the box even smaller. And now the rook is confining the king to only these four squares in the corner. If you place, for example, king to g7, once again, we can't make the box smaller right now. So we just wait. We play something like king to f5. And if you place king to h7, you need to ask yourself the same question again. Can the box be made smaller? Well, yes, it can, right? Rook to g6 makes the box smaller. And now the king has only two squares to move to. Now, once again, when the king has two squares to move to, you need to be careful. Uh, if <laughs> now you need to avoid stalemate. So if king to h8, for example, and you play king to f6, trying to just move your king around because you can't make the box any smaller, and king to g h7, and after king to g6, king to h8, you can make the box smaller. You can play rook g7 and give him only one square to use. However, that is stalemate, and you want to avoid that. So instead, here after king to h8, the smart idea is to simply take the checkmate. Rook, to f rook h6 is checkmate. Now this box idea might seem a little bit confusing at first, but really it comes down to the question, can I make the box smaller? Every move you need to ask yourself, can you make the box smaller? If you can, do so. If not, then keep your rook where it is and move your king. Eventually you'll be able to get the king into a corner and give checkmate.